We're going to show you the Android 13 settings you need to turn off now, including the number one security threat to Androids and the setting that allows Google to track you everywhere you go. But first, a setting that reduces the number of annoying notifications you receive. Notifications are great, but when one app is sending you dozens of notifications every single day, that can get annoying. And when an app is sending you all those notifications, it's constantly running in the background and draining your battery life. Let's open up the settings app. I'll swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap the settings gear. Then scroll down and tap notifications, tap app notifications, and then sort by most frequent. And look at that Gmail, 57 notifications per day, wow. If there's an app that's sending you too many notifications, you have a couple of options. You could tap the switch to turn off notifications entirely. Probably not what you wanna do. Instead, we'll tap on Gmail, scroll down and tap notification categories, and then pick and choose what kind of notifications you want to receive. Android 13 finally introduced a feature that requires apps to ask your permission before they can send you notifications. I was shocked when I read the release notes and saw this was a new feature. We're gonna show you some more battery tips later in this video, but first there are two more notification settings we need to change. Do you want your Android constantly notifying you when Wi-Fi networks are available? No. Tap back to the main page of the settings app. Then tap connections, tap Wi-Fi, tap the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen to get to the advanced settings, and then turn off the switch next to network notification. This is a lifesaver when you're out in public and there are tons of Wi-Fi networks around. Our next setting will save you from embarrassing situations with your family and friends. Android 13 is a brand new setting that prevents notifications from appearing on your TV when you're sharing your screen. Let's head back to the main page of settings. Tap Connected Devices, then tap Smart View. Tap on the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen, then tap Settings, and turn off the switch next to Hide Notifications on TV. Keep in mind this setting will be grayed out if your phone isn't connected to a TV. I wish we could just turn this off now because who's gonna remember to turn it off when they connect to their TV? This next setting is a bit controversial. Let's talk about 120 hertz displays. Yes, they make for a smoother scrolling experience, but we have heard from some people that 120 hertz displays make them feel nauseous. If you feel the same way, you don't need to throw away your brand new phone and get a crappy older phone. You can just go back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap display then tap motion smoothness and select standard, then tap apply. This is another setting that you won't see on your phone unless it has 120 hertz display. And keep in mind, these are all just suggestions. You don't have to turn everything we're turning off. I probably wouldn't turn off 120 hertz displays either. Me neither. The next setting will make your display a little bit easier to look at. In the display section of settings, scroll down and tap on screen mode and then select natural. I really like the natural screen mode. Vivid is just too cool for me. Natural feels more natural. We're gonna leave it on Vivid for this screen recording. Next, let's make sure your Android doesn't lock itself too soon. The default screen timeout period for a lot of Androids is just 30 seconds. That's not enough time. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on screen timeout. We recommend maybe two to five minutes. We have it on 10 right now for our screen recording. Did you know there's something hiding on the sides of your screen? Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap on edge panels. Edge panels are really neat, but if you don't use them, it's a good idea to just turn them off. Depending on the edge panels you choose, your phone could vibrate all day long, which is gonna be annoying and drain your battery. Let's turn off the switch next to edge panels. And there's one more thing hidden on your Android's home screen that you might wanna turn off. Android 13 is a media page that you can access by swiping left to right on the home screen. This media page will drain your Android's battery by loading news stories in the background, so there's something there to look at when you swipe to it. To turn it off, we're gonna go back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on home screen, then turn off the add media page to home screen switch. Like the 120 hertz refresh rate setting, we think this next setting might be controversial too. Let's head back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap security and privacy, and woo, they really want us to turn on device protection. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but for now, we're gonna tap on Find My Mobile and then scroll down to Offline Finding. Offline Finding lets your phone be found by other people's Galaxy devices when it's not connected to a network. It's definitely useful, especially if you're a forgetful person who loses their phone a lot. The price you pay is that your phone uses battery and mobile data in the background to scan for other people's lost devices. 
The choice is yours. If you want to leave offline finding on, we really recommend tapping offline finding and turning on the switch next to encrypt offline location. You will need to set up a pin, but at least now your information will be secure. This next setting sounds like one you'd want to leave on, but really you shouldn't. Let's tap back to the main security and privacy page and then tap on go to device protection. Device protection sounds great, right? Just like antivirus on a PC, device protection will slow down your Android and drain its battery life because it's scanning everything every day. What they're really trying to do is selling you McAfee, which is antivirus software you don't need as long as you're downloading your apps from the Google Play Store, which already has built-in protection. And McAfee isn't cheap. The mid-tier plan costs $99 per year for families. Do you think Samsung or Google would sell a phone that's really that vulnerable to hackers? Samsung is definitely getting kickbacks from McAfee for selling their software. This next setting is another canine in a wool coat. I think he means a wolf in sheep's clothing. What did I say? Let's tap back to security and privacy, scroll down and tap privacy, then scroll down and tap other privacy settings and then tap customization service. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is customize apps. So let's tap on that and it really seems like no big deal. I love sticker recommendations, but what's the cost? Well, if we tap back one page and then tap on data management, call and message history, search data, browsing history, and location. Your phone sends all this data to Samsung when customization is on. You've got a couple of choices. You could pick and choose what data Samsung receives, or if we've adequately scared you, tap back one page, then scroll down and tap stop customizing all devices, tap stop all customization, and then tap turn off. There's a lot more we need to talk about here in the privacy section. First, we're gonna turn off this switch next to send diagnostic data. When you turn off the switch, make sure to uncheck the box saying, I agree to send diagnostic data, and then tap OK. Your Android will use battery and mobile data collecting this information that gets sent to Samsung. If you didn't turn off customization service entirely, make sure to tap on customization service, scroll down, and turn off the switch next to customize ads and direct marketing. When this is on, your Android collects a lot of information about you to send you relevant advertising. If you turn this off, you'll still see relevant ads. Major ad networks don't let low quality ads into their networks, and you may actually see fewer ads because you're now a less valuable advertising target. Next, tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap on activity controls and scroll down and take a look at the sub settings underneath web and app activity. These sub settings basically give Google access to everything on your Android. So let's uncheck that first box, scroll down and tap pause. Got it. Let's tap on that second box, scroll down and tap stop saving. Middle box went away when we turned off that first box. Tap, got it. You're all set. And if you do want to leave these sub settings on, consider turning on an auto delete schedule. Let's tap on auto delete and then check the box next to auto delete activity older than three months seems reasonable. Let's talk about the setting that lets Google track you everywhere you go. Tap back in the upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap on Google location history. Google saves a location history of everywhere you go on your Android. It's a little bit creepy and it drains your battery. I get concerned about what happens if your Android falls into the wrong hands. All of a sudden that person has access to the places you visit most often. And if you don't want to turn off your Google location history entirely, you can turn on an auto delete schedule for this too. There's a lot of talk about de-Googling your phone. If that's a video you'd like to see us make, leave us a comment down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Next, we're gonna tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and then tap on ads and tap delete advertising ID. Even if you turn off personalized ads, really that's just turning it off moving forward. Advertisers can still see what you've done in the past. Turning this off deletes that data. Let's tap delete advertising ID and you're all set. Remember how we turned off send diagnostic data earlier? Well, we get to do that again. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap on usage and diagnostics and turn off this usage and diagnostic switch. It's time to talk about the number one security threat on Androids. We're going to head back to the main security and privacy page on your Android, scroll down, and tap on install unknown apps. Do you want your apps to be able to download other apps on your Android without your permission? It's kind of like having a party at home and you invite somebody and then they invite all their crappy friends over and then all of a sudden your home's a disaster. It's actually kind of like that and that's why we recommend turning off install unknown apps for all of your apps and in the future if an app needs to install an unknown app, you can just come back in here and give it that permission. This next setting is really important, especially if you have a nosy sibling. Let's tap back to the main 
green privacy and security page and then tap on other security settings right at the top of the screen make passwords visible turn that off make passwords visible quickly shows the letter you just typed to make it easier to type a whole password so that can be useful if a lot of your passwords have a bunch of random letters and numbers but it makes you easier to spy on maybe you're out in public someone's looking over your shoulder all of a sudden they've got your password or they're taking a video of it over your shoulder or the place you're in has a bunch of security cameras boom there you go and you have your password now a lot of a lot These of ways this can go ideas. wrong. Yeah. This next setting gives apps the power to completely control your Android. One below, make passwords visible. We have device admin apps. Tap on that. Device admin apps have the power to control everything on your Android. The concern here is that if a bad app gets device admin access, it could do real damage. Sometimes it is necessary to leave device admin access on for some of your apps, especially if it is a work phone. But if this is just your personal phone, turn it off entirely. To turn off device admin access, tap the switch next to an app, then tap deactivate. Next, let's talk about one of the biggest Android battery drainers. Let's head back to the main page of the settings app. One below, security and privacy is location, tap on that, and then tap on app permissions. Here you'll see a list of all your apps and how often they can access your location. But this list is incomplete. There are many system apps that could also be accessing your location. To view those, tap the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen and then tap show system and bam, we have a lot more apps. When an app uses your location, it drains your phone's battery. So the apps you see under allowed all the time can drain your battery all the time, even when you're not using them. If an app has access to your location all the time, tap on it. We're gonna pick on Snapchat for this example and then select allow while only using the app or ask every time. Next, make sure to turn off this switch next to use precise location. Most apps, with the exception of Maps apps, don't need access to your precise location. The more precise GPS is, the more battery it uses. And there's another important location setting you should turn off. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, back one more time and then tap on location services. Take a look at the switches underneath Wi-Fi scanning and Bluetooth scanning. Constantly scanning for nearby Bluetooth devices and Wi-Fi networks will drain your Android's battery. Let's tap the switch next to both of those and turn them both off. This next setting is hidden on your Android and we need to turn on developer mode to access it. We're gonna head back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on about phone. Scroll down and tap software information. Keep tapping on the build number until it says you're now a developer, enter your pin number, and boom, developer mode has been turned on. Congratulations, you're now a developer. Next, we're gonna tap back to the main page of settings, and we have this new developer options menu. Let's tap on that, and then we're gonna scroll down until we see mobile data always active. By default, your phone doesn't completely disconnect from the cellular network even when you're connected to Wi-Fi, because if it did, you'd lose your internet connection for a few seconds every time you left home. That's when it would be reconnecting to the cellular network. Staying connected to the cellular data network all the time is a good thing for most people, but if you don't have a good signal at home or in your mountain chalet, you can save a lot of battery life by turning off mobile data always active. Now that you've optimized your phone for Android 13, check out our next video to learn how to stop it from spying on you that's appearing on the screen now. And McAfee isn't cheap. The mid-tier plan costs $99 per month for families. That's really expensive. It's very expensive. It actually costs $99 a year. Oh, a year. Okay. Yep. This next setting is another canine in a wool coat. I think he means a sheep in wolf's, wolf's clothing. <laughs> Samsung is definitely getting kickbacks from McAfee to sell their software. McAfee? What is it? It's McAfee. Oh, McAfee? Okay, one but more time. Could, yeah. McAfee. What did I say? Did I say McAfee? Yeah, McAfee. that's McAfee. McAfee. Okay, yeah. McAfee. All right.